Our first question is from Conscious Mukhani. And as you can see, we have our little sheepies here. And it is all about cloning. So, it says the diagram shows one method of cloning sheep. Okay, now how do we clone these sheep? You start off with the mama one. So, this would be the donor. Okay, and the embryo cell is removed from the donor sheep, okay, and it is allowed to multiply. So we now have two. Identical. This would be by a process of mitosis. Please, people, remember that um, a normal body cell is called a somatic cell. And it's different from a sex cell in that a somatic cell... So that would be any cell in your body would be diploid. In other words, it has two sets of chromosomes. One from your mother and one from your father. Okay, this is the maternal chromosome and that is the paternal chromosome for every single set of chromosomes you need. So that's your normal somatic cell would be diploid. Then... After meiosis, in, that happens in the gonads or sex organs, you are now going to have a diploid cell that is, under, first of all, undergoes meiosis 1. And during meiosis 1, it is going to become haploid because it is reduction division. Okay. So once that's happened, these two little guys now double up. Okay, so we end up with this. And we end up one of these in the female. One will become an ovum. And three become polar cells. But they are all three and the ovum are haploid. In this, if it's a sperm cell... Or if it happens in a male, you're going to have four sperm cells. Okay? And the reason the ovum is larger is because the polar cells are very small. And the ovum is large. And that's, but all of that is now split up with the sperm cell where each little sperm cell is tiny. So it's taking... This and that and that and that. One big one and three tiny ones versus four slightly bigger ones than the polar cells. So that is in meiosis. But when we take a normal somatic cell, which is diploid, we make it undergo mitosis so that we have two that are identical. Okay. Then what they do, they take that nucleus... Nuclei means more than one. And from the donor cells, so that this nucleus gets taken out and that one gets taken out. So we now just sit with the cells here. Okay? But the nucleus is gone. So we say that they are nucleolus over. Over means two ovums. So ovum is equal to one. Over is when we have more than one can be two, three, ten, hundred, doesn't matter. Okay, from, okay, now, they take these little cells and that are empty and they now put the, a nucleus in. From another sheep. So, wherever that sheep is. And that's now, we have our little, there they sit. Then these eggs are taken and they are put inside this little sheep here. So this little sheep is what they call the foster sheep. She is just, um, she has no genetic influence on those eggs at all. Remember, the eggs come from the donor sheep. They do not come, uh, I mean the cells come from the donor sheep. So what do you have here? Those little nuclei are put, then put inside this sheep and they then grow inside her womb. And she is the one that then gives birth to these identical little sheep. So it says, explain why, why 
The lambs produced by this technique are identical to each other. Well, clearly, because it was identical cells, somatic cells, that underwent mitosis. And we know that with mitosis, you are always going to have one cell that now become, after mitosis, will have two identical daughter cells. Remember, meiosis, you have four identical daughter cells. Mitosis, only two. And here, that's exactly what they did. They allowed them to multiply by mitosis, so we have two identical cells. And those identical cells here is what this little sheep, uh, that, that little lamb is, and that little lamb, because a baby sheep is called a lamb. All righty, now, there's your two marks. Explain why the lambs are not genetically identical to the sheep that produced the foster eggs. Okay, now, the sheep which produced the foster eggs, we go back here. The nuclei are taken from the donor cells and are imported into foster eggs. Because her eggs, this donor sheep here, okay, so it's not the donor sheep, she's the foster sheep. Just give me a sec here. This is the foster sheep. They just use her egg cells. So it's it's like her her um, her egg cell or her ovum, those little ova, are like little suitcases. So they take, there we go. Think of the donor sheep as a suitcase with clothes in it. So what do they do? They take those clothes out and they throw her, show, throw her suitcases away. Okay, they throw the ova away. They, 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 we don't want them. We want the nuclei. And they take those diploid nuclei. Okay, remember, these are diploid they take these diploid nuclei from the donor sheep, so her clothes, they throw the suitcase away, and then they take those clothes and they put it inside the foster sheep's little suitcases, which are now empty because they've thrown those nuclei away as well. And that is what the difference is. So we are now using the donor sheep. Okay, we take her nuclei. Okay, they're the nuclei, and then we put those nuclei into the um, foster sheep. Ovum. Over. Okay, so there is no genetic link to the foster sheep. She's just simply providing the suitcase of the ova. For the clothes to go into. It's the clothes that matter, not the structure. But here, remember, clothes are the nuclei. Okay, right. Then it says, describe how cloning in animals or plants can be beneficial to humans. Now, humans can actually be quite revolting because what do humans do? Humans like artificial... Artificial, um, and I've just got <laughs> artificial selection. Okay, we use artificial selection. Why? Because we, the humans, use the traits that suit us to breed. All right, so what does that do? It means that we end up producing individuals with desired traits. We decide what those desired traits are. So if we want a plant to grow taller, we want it to be um, need less water, we want it to be frost resistant, 
we breed those characteristics so that we end up with crops that have those characteristics or animals that have those characteristics. Sheep that produce more wool, cows that produce more milk. We genetically modify them. And cloning is one of those ways of genetically modifying. So they want to know how cloning is beneficial and it's two marks, so we should give at least two facts, is that we to produce uh, organisms or individuals with desired traits. Um, we want better yields of crops. That's to improve food security. We want crops that are resistant to diseases. What, uh, 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 diseases, okay, um, to, we also for saving in danger species, okay, I can't think of any more, but there you go, oh, oh, also to produce, um, it, if, if you have individuals that are infertile, if you use this technique, you can actually produce offspring from them because if they're infertile, well, then clearly they can't reproduce. So here you can take their cells and their somat the nuclei from their somatic cells and put them in the ova of another organism, which will be, then be the foster mother. Okay. So